So this is what I'm gonna read now and it sounds really cute. And today there is also going to be, or for today and the rest of this weekend. I love that the weekend starts on the first day for me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but for today and the rest of the weekend, there will be biathlon competitions, which I'm really excited about. I love watching biathlon. Biathlon is one of my top three sports. Handball, hockey, biathlon. It sucks that it's called biathlon and not hiathlon, because then I could have been like, my top three sports are all starting with the letter H. Handball, hockey, hiathlon. But it's, it's, it's biathlon, which, you know, it's it's a weird name because we don't we don't call it biathlon in Sweden. We do call it biathlon, uh, biathlon in German, but in Swedish we call it skidskytte, which is ski shooting. Skid, skis, or a, a, a ski specifically. So ski shooting. Ski shooting is the name of biathlon in Swedish. Skidskytte. It's a lot easier to say. It sounds so much fun. It sounds so much more fun to say skidskytte. We're going to watch some skidskytte instead of we're going to watch some biathlon. It, it, it sounds like two completely different things. But that's the plan for the rest of today. I'm gonna read this. I am like so excited that I have read two books and I really enjoyed both of them. Like that is so weird. I did not expect that. But like, and with reading this, I am super excited for the Agatha Christie read along that is for the entire year of 2022. Like I'm super excited for that now after reading this. Like I just wanna go ahead and buy all the books. Kind of. Like I I I would love to go to England. I've never been to the UK, but I would love to go to England, go to a secondhand store and see how many Agatha Christie books they have and I could like take all of them. And it's, uh, it sounds so weird because I've only read one book. But yeah, you know. But I'm gonna read this. This is what I'm gonna focus on now. And then if I finish this before the third of the, the fourth of Advent, the last Advent, I'm going to unwrap this as I light the last candle. How are we already at the 4th of Advent? It's so weird. I do not understand. But anyway, that's the plan. Hi, it's evening. We got a Swede on the podium. Unfortunately, none of the German biathletes shot clean today. That was sad. Like, I love having two countries, but no, 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 but I love having two countries. Um, but now I'm eating dinner, like that kind of race, which is a sprint, takes several hours just because it's individual races. So you have to wait until the last person gets over the finish line before you know who will get the medals and stuff like that. So now I'm gonna eat some dinner. I'm eating toast. And I'm watching A Christmas Prince because it's so fitting, right? It's so fitting. I am reading a Christmas romance. I just realized that none of the Christmas romances... I have never read a Christmas romance with a royal thing. Like, if you watch Netflix Christmas movies, they have like royalty every turn. Like, oh, look, it's a Christmas romance with a prince. Oh, look over there, it's a Christmas romance with a prince. And you know, like that. There are Christmas romances with royalties all over the place. And are there books like that? Like, I love A Christmas Prince. I don't remember the first time that I watched it. I think I watched it when it came out, which is a while ago, and I loved it. And it's kind of like my comfort movie. I've even watched it in the summer whenever I felt like depressed, down. I can watch A Christmas Prince and I just, 
I adored this movie. So I thought it was so fitting to you while I read the second Christmas romance for this vlog. I'm watching a Christmas romance. I have two favorite Christmas movies. This is one of them. The Grinch is the other one. And The Grinch is currently at my job because my students were watching The Grinch. I brought The Grinch with me last week to school just because I have the first lesson 8.30 on Mondays and I felt like, oh my god, what if I show up at Monday and I forget the movie at home and I'm like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We don't have the movie here and we're supposed to watch this movie. So I brought it with me to work. And that means that my favorite Christmas movie is unavailable to me currently. So I'm watching my second favorite Christmas movie which is A Christmas Prince. I would actually love to own a box set of A Christmas Prince, the trilogy. That would be so fun to have. And kind of like, because this movie is, <laughs> is perfection. I just, I really love this movie, okay? Really, really adore it. I have started this. I haven't gotten that, like, I've gotten a few chapters in. Like, you see, I haven't barely made any progress. I don't know how well you can see this. I have barely made any progress, but I'm like a chapter in. I don't have that much update because the only thing that I read was a prologue. But I'm really curious to see what is going to happen. There was something about the guy going through a divorce or something like that, I think. Yeah, so the main guy in this, it doesn't say anything on, about it on the back. But Ben, who is the male love interest in this book, he is going through a divorce. We don't really know why, but there is something about trust. His ex-wife said, if you can't forgive me, then divorce me. So they're going for a divorce. So she did something that she, he can't forgive. And I'm kind of feel like cheating, probably. Like, I feel like if a partner can't forgive their partner, it's because of cheating. I don't, I can't see another, like, main reason for that, but I will find out as I fit, I, as I continue with this book. I will read it a bit later. I feel like I'm going to read it before bed, going a few chapters of it. But I was so hungry, I wanted to eat dinner and watch a Christmas romance movie. So that's my little update right now. But, yeah, that's my update for now. I will talk to you later. Bye. Hi, it's Saturday. Um, I was supposed to update you yesterday, but I spent the entire day with a video and I had technical difficulties and stuff, but that's where my camera was. So I couldn't update you, but yesterday I finished A Little Village Christmas and I don't really have that much to say about it. I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. It it was kind of like it was fine. It's not like I really enjoyed the other book by Sue Moorcraft that I read. This one didn't really work for me in that way. We have these two characters. We have Alexia and Ben. And Alexia is working to get this community cafe up and running and very quickly like very early on someone steals all the money and stuff from what was supposed to be the community cafe so everything that they had you know all the money they raised for this community cafe was gone and it was alexia's best friend her boyfriend was the one who did it and it's very early on like it's the first chapter so it's not a spoiler and ben is going through a divorce so he comes to this small town called middle dip just to to live with his uncle in like in a little cottage in the woods and help his uncle out and his uncle works on this project with Alexia. So that's kind of how they meet. They have a one night stand verily like the day that they meet they have a one night stand. And I feel like with this book it was very surface level for me. It felt a lot like it felt very shallow in a lot of ways and that sounds horrible. But like with Ben a big 
thing for him is the fact that he's going through this divorce with from his wife Imogen and the reason he wants to divorce Imogen is because she ends up in a car accident with his brother so it's like evening it's late why was she in this car with his brother and she does not want to tell him why so she's like i can't like i can't tell you i'm not gonna tell you and then at like after a lot of arguing she says if you can't forgive me then divorce me and he says how can i forgive you when you're not telling me what happened like all he knows is that his wife was in a car with his brother late in the day and they ended up in a car accident she was so badly injured that she lost a sensation and use of one of her arms and his brother ends up in prison and that's like the main thing for him that he goes around divorcing his wife not knowing what happened and having you know like all of these family secrets surrounding his brother and he's like i don't why i don't know i like he he just he's so like it hurts him so much that he doesn't know and he's so confused because everyone seems to know in his family but he doesn't and like they want to uh, like his parents want to protect his brother instead of ben who is going through the divorce and everyone is like you shouldn't divorce her and he's like why shouldn't i like give me a reason and they can't give him a reason because they can't tell him the truth which makes him kind of like paranoid of course but the relationship between him and alexia i kind of get it i, I think it's kind of cute like i i get that they're attracted to each other and all of that and i think that alexia is very good for ben but i don't really see i don't i don't see more than that in this in the relationship like why would she choose ben over everyone else why like he, why he why alex is good for ben i get that but it just it doesn't really go deeper than that for me so yeah i gave it three stars i did enjoy the little town the small town kind of feeling of it i wish there was more emphasis on that but i did enjoy it so that is three books down in three weeks and it's time to open the last book which means that the fourth of advent is next is next day tomorrow tomorrow is the fourth of advent meaning that i will have this to read for the last week kind of like how i planned the video to go without it quite going that way here we have the book. One more for Christmas by Sarah Morgan. This looks so good. Like, look at this cover. It gives so much winter vibes. One more for Christmas. Like, the cover is gorgeous. I love these kinds of illustrated covers when it's, it looks like it's hand painted in a way on a canvas. I'm gonna read you the back. So it says, This year, make room for one more Christmas. Gail is a highly successful and motivated businesswoman, but her success has come at a price. She hasn't spoken to her daughters, Ella and Samantha, for years. But when Gail has an accident at work, she realizes she needs to make amends with her family. And so she invites herself to join Ella and Samantha for their Christmas in the beautiful Scottish Highland. The sisters are none too pleased that their mother has inserted herself into their Christmas plans. They have each other and don't need their mother back in their lives. Or so they think. As they embark on their first family Christmas together in years, will the three women learn that sometimes facing up to a few home truths is all you need to heal your heart so it sounds like it's literary fiction i think i'm a little bit nervous like i have been honest on my channel that i don't have a relationship with my parents and i feel like this usually the situation in books and movies where it's like a parent is not you know talking to their children it, it's not the same kind of thing or reason as for me why I don't talk to my parents so I feel like 
it won't be that hard to read if that makes sense but this is the next book that i'm going to read it's over 400 pages long so this is the last book for the vlog and i'm gonna read this for the coming week i'm gonna be reading this book i am going to watch some cross distance skiing today there are sprints they're doing sprints like as someone who loves biathlon sprint has two completely different meanings in cross distance skiing it takes like two minutes and 30 seconds to go in biathlon it takes 30 minutes so it's a lot longer but both are called sprints i think that's kind of funny but that's kind of like the plan i'm gonna watch first long distance skiing now and then i'm going to watch some biathlon later today Hi, it's Monday, so it's been a while. I am over halfway into this book, One More for Christmas. I was a little bit worried in the beginning that it would be triggering for me because it's about uh, a mother and her two kids and they haven't talked for five years because they had an argument that ended badly so they haven't talked to each other for five years. The sisters have kept in touch, they're very, very close, but neither of them has spoken to or seen their mother in five years. And then the mom is this very accomplished woman who's had best-selling motivational books and kind of like, you can uh, create your own life, choices, not sacrifices, stuff like that. So she's a motivational person and during an interview that was to give her an award for one of her books i think she was given an award there uh she was in an accident and ended up in the hospital and people started you know asking do you want us to call anyone and her assistants people that she worked with just said like no she doesn't have a family she's alone she doesn't have any near she doesn't have any loved ones which she took offense to, so she was like, I called my daughter, and the people she worked with were like, she hit her head, she doesn't have a daughter, but she has two. So they ended up calling one of Gail's daughters. Gail is the woman, the mother, so that is how they reached out, and Gail, after having this accident, she's like, she didn't want to continue her life without mending the relationship between her and her daughters and because of different reasons they end up spending christmas together in scotland i really really enjoyed this so far i love the sisters ella and samantha are really really great i love samantha the most so ella has a husband and a daughter and she got married and had her daughter during the time that she and her mother didn't speak so suddenly uh, Gail, the mother, has, you know, like she's confronted by the fact that her daughter got married and has a kid who is like four years old. So she went from not having a relationship to her daughters to having a grandkid and a son-in-law and going to Scotland for Christmas. And it's really, really fun. I love what's happening in Scotland. I really do enjoy it so far. As I said, I was worried that I would be triggered because I don't have a relationship to my parents. Um, but my situation with my parents is not at all as the situation in this book. I was, I made an entire video uh, about what happened between me and my parents. But in short, I was hospitalized for suicide prevention. And when I was discharged, so when I got out of the hospital, I wanted space. I needed space to kind of recharge my batteries. And I needed to, you know, do, a, I, I had a lot of catching up to do with university and I had my work to get back to, my cats, my apartment. I had to, buy foods and cook food and i just had a lot of things that you know if you are in that place where you don't want to live and you're hospitalized for it 
you're not the best person when you get out of hospital because you're kind of like you don't have that much energy you, not a lot of will to do anything but you're no longer one to die is essentially like that at least that's how it works here and my mom took offense to the fact that i didn't have the energy to to talk to her and that's why she broke up contact with me it's very like weird when i talk about it because it sounds so weird to me that it happened like it sometimes it gets to me that i look back on the few the the week after i was discharged from hospital from, from hospitalization for suicide prevention that i had three calls with my parents two with only my mom and the last one was with both my parents and they never asked how i was doing they never asked how are you and my mom just immediately like the first thing that she told me was that I had mistreated her like that's the first thing that she called her suicidal kid to say which you know great thank you S sarcasm that was sarcasm um but she she even told me that i would ruin her vacation if i was if i spent summer with them and those things that she said to me are things that i can never forgive because of she knew what state i was in she knew my background with suicide attempts suicidal thoughts self-harming like she knew my she knew a lot of things about that and about me my relationship to that essentially but she still said those things to me and my dad never had a conversation with me only like i spent an entire day thinking my dad is gonna call me because mom must have told him about our call, the call that I had with mom. So dad is gonna call me any second now and he's gonna tell me that he heard mom's perspective and now he wants to hear my perspective. And he wants to hear how I'm doing because I'm the one who was discharged from suicide prevention less than a week ago. But he never called me and the last call that I had was with both of them and he... He was completely fine with breaking off contact with me without asking how I'm doing, how I'm feeling, what my perspective is. He, everything he needed was mom's side and it was enough for him to break off contact with his suicidal kid. And those things are something that I can never forgive because they proved to me back then that I don't mean anything to them so my situation with my parents is is you know like a galaxy away from the situation in this their conflict is that the mother she's a very cold person very reserved she doesn't like emotions and she's very you know you the most important thing is that you are successful that you make money and love and you know romance that doesn't matter believing in santa claus not important you should be focused and ready for the horrible parts that life will throw at you and so she taught her kids her daughters to you know like she tried to in her opinion she prepared them for the horrible parts of life so that they could make it in this horrible world she never talked about their dad who died when the mom was 20 years old the kids were very very young so like that's the big difference and they had the conflict that they had was because the mom was she said some things that in her like for her the most the best thing you can do the key to happiness is to be successful, have a stable job, stable income. So when her daughter, when one of her daughters switched job occasionally, like frequently, the mom was very, you know, disappointed. And, and so they said things that created this rift between them. And that's why I am not triggered by this book, which I, I was scared that I was going to be. But... They said my situation and their situation are not the same at all, but I got a package. So I thought that I was gonna open it to cheer myself up a little bit. Because this is something that I, from what I know, I haven't ordered this. 
I mean, it could be a pre-order or something like that, but I don't know. It's two books. Oh my god, it's two books. We have... Oh my god, who got me these? I have not ordered these. The first one is Descendant of the Crane. Oh my god. It's stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh my god. Who, who gave me these? Is there a card? There is a card. Okay. There are cards. Oh my god, Charlotte! You, you gave me more books! Oh my god. Okay, so for this one, it's this. Thank you, Charlotte. Yes, the cover is gorgeous. All I know about this is that it's a fantasy book inspired by Asian... I don't know if it's Asian history, mythology, but it's an Asian fantasy book, which I'm really excited about. My battery is about to die, so I'm gonna just go through this very, very quickly. The next book is... <laughs> Oh my god, the love hypothesis. Oh my god, okay. I also, I love that it says the TikTok sensation. Oh my god. I have heard nothing but great things about this. I have been really excited to read this. I had a live show with Jane and she talked about this so highly. She, like, she really, really loved this and she loves she is like a romance reader. I am a romance reader. So I was like, she recommends it. I'm gonna read it. So thank you so much, Charlotte, for, for gifting me this book. Like, thank you so much. Like, I'm very happy that I opened them now because I feel a lot better. Hi, it's a few days later. I haven't updated you. I am still at home sick. I like, I don't feel sick. But since I do have symptoms and I still have a slight fever, I am not allowed to go back to work. Which, you know, it's fine. It's, I, I'm not missing that much because it's almost Christmas break. So, yeah. So I'm gonna, you know, when I have a vacation for the entire week, between Christmas and New Year's. So I am not going back to work until the 3rd of January. Yes, we actually do work between Christmas and New Year's for the full week here. Uh, like if you work at a school, you have so much vacation in the summer, so you don't really get any breaks the way that students get breaks. Like a lot of people think that us teachers have breaks when the students have breaks, but we don't. We we work in the breaks to kind of like catch up and prepare while the students are away kind of thing. I decided that because this is my last checkup, I wanted to end with something Christmassy. I wanted this entire vlog series like this and the first part to have more Christmas things. Like I plan to go to the Christmas market, that is on the mountain every year here in the city. Like, it's so cozy. It's, like, so amazing. But I was sick, so I couldn't do that. And I couldn't, like, walk around town showing you uh, the Christmas decorations. Just everything oozing in the Christmas spirit, winter season and that. So I, I am drinking mulled cider to give some of the Christmas... Uh, feeling at least. I have actually watched a Christmas movie pretty much every day. I re-watched a Christmas Prince of Christmas movie and I watched the sequels and I I found out that the writer who the person who wrote the screenplay for a Christmas Prince wrote a book which a Christmas Prince is based on and now I'm excited to read that book. It is kind of similar. It has to do with a, a reporter who ends up in a royal palace falling in love with the prince who is soon to be king and I want to read that series. So now maybe next year Christmas reading vlog I will read those books. I don't know. There are so many books out there that I'm just really excited for. But I last like yesterday I watched Christmas at Pemberley Ma Manor. 
it was beautiful like i really really love the romance in it it's kind of like a pride and prejudice retelling and it's so weird i have never read pride and prejudice but i have watched the tv series and the movie adaptation of pride and prejudice i also watched lost in austin which i loved my sister is or was obsessed with pride and prejudice that kind of historical regency romance she was obsessed with that so like everything that had to do with pride and prejudice i had to watch with her and i have read a few pride and prejudice retellings in like a contemporary setting so i'm kind of intrigued like would i enjoy reading the actual pride and prejudice book i don't know but let's talk about the last book that i read for this it's so weird so weird it's one more one one more for christmas i gave it three stars let's start there i gave it three stars the reason i gave it three stars like i loved a part of this like the romance in this beautiful like had this only been the romance story between these two characters it would probably have been a five star like let's be real but it's not only that story so this follows two sisters samantha and ella and this mother is in an accident following an interview which is um everything is caught on camera she ends up in the hospital and while in the hospital people just tell her that uh she doesn't have any loved ones and so she feels like she wants to have a relationship with her daughter so she reaches out to them and they have this plan to go to Scotland because Samantha works at a kind of like a travel agency thing. So they were asked to check out this place in Scotland and see if they could work with that place and have it as part of their travel agency thing that they can offer trips to this place in Scotland. So they travel to Scotland. Gail finds out that her daughter Ella has both a husband and a daughter that Gail did not know about. So they all go to Scotland and it's kind of like Gail is trying to figure out how to be a mother to two adult women who she hasn't talked to in five years. She's trying to figure out what it is how it's what it's like to be a grandmother to kind of like a four-year-old and she also has to figure out what it's like to have a son-in-law because her daughter is married and she has to like you know get through uh, those feelings that comes up seeing that she has a daughter who is married and she wasn't part of that and like this strange man is in her daughter's life and probably knows her daughter more than she does as a mother. And Ella, who has the daughter and a husband, she is trying to navigate her relationship to uh, to Gail because they haven't spoken and they have like a very complicated relationship. And the relationship in this is between Samantha, who has the travel company, the travel company, and a guy who is working at this building, the place that they are checking out. And their romance is beautiful. Like I really enjoy it their romance and this book has four perspectives so we're following the three women the mom gail and her two daughters samantha and ella and we also follows a woman called kirsty who is a scottish woman at this place that they're visiting and i only cared about one perspective and was samantha because of her relationship to this guy and she was such like her as a character was so much more interesting to me that i i didn't really care about the other perspectives i just all i wanted to do was read her perspective i was just waiting for her perspective and i feel like i know a lot of people have that issue as well with books when there are multiple perspectives and you care about a few of those but not all of them and so some perspectives are just plain boring and some perspectives you're just sitting like you can't stop reading them and then you reach the end of the perspective and you're like oh and you kind of 
put off continuing because you don't really like that person whose perspective you're getting. And I feel like that is the issue that I have because I really love the romance, but this is not a romance book. It's a literary fiction book. And I didn't care about four out of five perspectives. So I gave it three stars. I enjoyed what it said about family and finding yourself and being true to yourself, seizing the moment, you know, all of those things. I really enjoyed that. But I didn't really, I wasn't invested in the characters apart from two characters. And I didn't care about anyone else and what was happening to them. Like I was annoyed, but I never, you know, felt... A deeper connection to any other character than Samantha and uh, the guy Brody. They were the only ones that I cared about really. I did really like Ella's kid. She was adorable but that was like it. I didn't feel invested in any other part of the book but the romance. Nothing had gripped me and that's sad to say but that's why I gave it three stars and as I said like had this been only the romance I would probably give it five stars it was beautiful so here we have the four books that I read for this video so four weeks it took me two weeks over two weeks to read this it took me a few days to read this a few days to read this and a few days to read this so after like while reading this in part one, I was so worried that I wasn't gonna make it to any of the other books. Which is why I opened which is why I opened this before I finished this. So what we have is five stars, five stars, three stars, and three stars. So we started off this video with two five stars and ended with two three stars. I mean, it could have been worse. Like, I could have given a book one star. I didn't. Like, three stars is still a good rating. But, like, I... It's kind of sad that I start off with the two best books. It would have been good if I had them, like, I first I read this, and then I read this, and then I read this, and then I read this, you know, like, a mix. So it's five free, five free, but it is what it is. I still enjoyed the books. I am very happy with how it turned out. This book was beautiful, absolutely adore it, and I feel like this is the kind of book that I want to read every Christmas now. Like, it, it has that, like, it, it, my reading experience of this book was so good, and it left me feeling, like, very happy that I picked it up, that I feel like next Christmas at 1st of September, I want, 1st of September, 1st of December, I want to pick this up and read it. So it's kind of like a yearly tradition to read this book. It kind of felt like that to me. Then I really loved that I read A Murder Mystery. I really, really enjoy this. Like, I haven't, like, stopped thinking about this and how I want to go forward with reading Agatha Christie and tabbing and annotating and all of that. Like, I really enjoyed reading this. It was just so much fun and I loved the aha moments at the end when the big reveals came and I just felt like that makes so much sense like I understand why they brought that up that thing that they brought up earlier in the book that I felt like it doesn't, didn't have any real meaning it wasn't important it was just like a fluff a filling scene you know but it, it mattered and I just I loved figuring all of that out and then these two they were both good, but they weren't the best. This one was a romance, but I didn't enjoy the romance. This wasn't a romance, but I only enjoyed the romance. So then that's it for this vlog series. That is so weird to call it that, to say that it's it's the end. It's so weird. Uh, it's Christmas in two days, which is very weird. Like. So, Merry Christmas, Happy Christmas, Guyul, Hohe Weihnachten, whatever you say, Feliz Navidad, all of that. I hope you will have a good time, no matter if you celebrate Christmas or not, just enjoy December, the end of the year, all of that. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. And please let me know down below what you thought. Are there any Christmas recommendation books that you have that you think that I would enjoy or anything like that? And until next time, good reading. Bye.